Hey, Mr. Nesto. Hello, Dave. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I am doing great. I see that you are live from Dubai and I am live from Houston. <laughs> that's a good thing. When that's wrong, then one of us got on holiday. I don't know how the planes are working for that. So uh, we've got, both got gray t-shirts on. That's very rare. We don't normally wear gray, but uh, there we go. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and uh, I see that you are uh, wearing some sort of uh, reggae shirt or, or Obama shirt or what is your shirt? Is or shirt? I don't even like reggae music. It's just the <laughs> hair. I fooled you and after 20 years. You should know better. This is my Walking Dead shirt. Negan. Megan. Negan. Who's Negan? Negan. Negan is this uh, this bad guy who's a good guy, but a bad guy who's a good guy, uh, who basically in the post-apocalyptic world um, was the most successful leader because he just basically ruled with an iron hand and he had all these big territories that were all, everyone's happy and everyone's living together, but he's just a bit of a bully. But then our heroes come in and they upset him, get rid of him, and then the whole thing falls to bits. So maybe in the future we should all be horrible. So that's a big lesson for you. If the, if the zombies do take over, the best thing to do is rule with an iron hand. I'm just saying. You might not have to worry about it, but if you do, now you know. So you think that we're actually heading to a post-apocalyptic world? No, I think we're going to be fine. To be honest with you, I mean, I went out today for, uh, um, since the, the we've stopped the, the lockdown. And you're allowed to go out to limited means. So you can go out three times, every three days you can go shopping. Um, the supermarkets and malls are open with limited shops that are open. Um, and you're, you're allowed to do more than you could do before. And it still felt empty. I'm sure we will get more people coming out to play a little later on. Um, but it feels like we got over the bump. I think that we're going to get a second wave, but I think the second wave will be more manageable. Um, and everyone's just really cautious now. So people keeping their distance, people not saying hello to anybody else in case they come over and say hi. Everyone wearing rubber gloves. And it feels like a really weird Woody Allen movie. Remember Woody Allen movies like Sleeper? Where weird things happen in the future. Well, this is the weird stuff, but it, it's completely real. And that's what we got. So what can you say? Yeah, so today is Sunday. And uh, this is our... Uh, let me just check. This is our 40th. No, I think we have to correct that. This is our 42nd day in quarantine. So wow. 42nd day in quarantine. This is just absolutely cr uh, crazy. And uh, well, today we are on our second day of our uh, clinic um, for for uh, all the questions that everybody's asking. So our uh, disruption clinic. And uh, we are already getting started with our next series tomorrow, which I think is going to be very interesting, which is, which is about leverage and uh, how you can actually leverage all this, what has happened, so that you will be able to, to come out much better on the, uh, on the other side. So let's just, uh, let's just get started with some of the questions. Let's see if we can actually manage to do it in less than 45 minutes. <laughs> Well, that was down to you. You got excited yesterday because I, I, I answered a lot of the questions. You answered some of the questions as well. And then I thought, okay, it's gone half past, we'll call it a day. And you're the one who pulled another 20 minutes out of the hat. So, uh, I mean, I enjoyed it. I have no problem with it anyway. So, uh, and all the answers and all the questions were fantastic. You've got some really well, good you know, viewers out there, which is good. One of the reasons why I get excited is because uh, we are getting already – uh, possibilities of actually being uh, having the toilet paper diaries in Hulu. Uh, I have been contacted by a number of TV producers and uh, that kind of thing. Get really excited about uh, creating content, so that's great. So anyway, right. let's go back to. I mean, so, uh, we have a ton of questions to answer, so we're going to have to be a little bit selective on <laughs> which ones we can get. Let, so let, let's see how many we can get. Uh, you want to you, you have one already on the list? Oh, yeah, I'll take the first one. This one's from uh, Simran from India. And Simran asks, do you think the world leaders have done a good job looking after the pandemic and keeping their people safe? Wow, we don't go near politics on this show. Um, <laughs> but I think the very fact that I had to leave a house leave, wearing rubber gloves, wearing one of those horrible masks, um, and getting horrible stares from everybody just in case you're the one, 
lets me know that the world leaders have not done a great job of dealing with it. It should have been nipped in the bud. It should have been a network of people saying, we've got a problem, how can we help? Instead, what we've got is something, I mean, and this was warned about t uh, five years ago, Obama warned that this was gonna be a big problem because we had nothing in place for it. Um, Bill Gates warned it was gonna be a big problem because we had nothing in place for it. All the world leaders and their predecessors didn't invest in, in a pandemic global um, force. And now I think we've got, if anything, more fragmented leaderships than ever before with NATO and with the United Nations not being so united in many cases. Um, and I think that another pandemic will come forward if it's not even the evolution of the existing one that we got. And I don't see how people will deal with it that much better because it seems to be that the time it took for it to rise up we still had a lot of people umming and eyeing and in denial. I mean, let's take a classic example without picking on any particular politics. You were saying on the show about Mexico and saying that, you know, they're in denial, they're doing all the, uh, what's it, when guys go to the beach and have all the fun and blah, blah, blah. Um, and now Mexico is in lockdown and it's gonna be another 30 days of lockdown after sure. complete denial by the leadership. So I think that all the leaders need to take a, a big uh, breath and a wake up I wake up about the fact that you can't do this alone. And if you do stay in isolation, people won't tell you, and it's gonna cost you lives. I think the weird thing is, as, as I'm sure you're gonna share, women, the women leaders have been miles better because they've got empathy and emotional intelligence and the ability to think about nurturing rather than hitting the goals, hitting the targets. And I think it's very similar to a problem that you get in business anyway. So yeah, that's my thought, my, my, my long lecture. How about you, Nesta? Well, I definitely believe that uh, if women will govern the world, we will be a lot better. I think we as uh, guys are not as competent as we possibly think we are. I mean, just look at New Zealand, uh, look at Finland, look at uh, Norway, look at Germany. I absolutely, I am 100% pro having women as uh, heads of state. I think that they are absolutely better in handling uh, these kinds of things. And this is the reason why they, the countries that actually have women as heads of state are doing a lot better. So my answer, Simran, to you is, for me, it has been in many cases embarrassing to see what has been going on in, in uh, for example, in, in, in Mexico, which is my uh, second country or first country, whichever you want to uh, put it. It is really embarrassing what uh, the government has done. But also here in the United States, I mean, everything is so confusing and there's so much misinformation and uh you know i mean there was a task force that was supposed to be taking care of pandemics and then it was getting got rid of it and uh it's just been handled with uh extreme extreme uh you know it, it, not thinking about what's going to be happening and i think it's just something that needs to uh, consider carefully. So it's just not about what people are saying or how they are behaving in, in government. I think after listening to what has uh, what these people are saying, you can actually say if those people are worth actually having in power or not. And if not, I definitely suggest that whenever possible, make sure that you elect better leaders because it is in many cases very embarrassing, I have to say. Well, I wonder whether this is something that needs to be driven by the leaders or, or can be driven by companies or can be driven by individuals. Because ultimately, um, the leaders who we elect are the ones that have to make those decisions. But you've got companies that also have footprints in different countries. And many of them have, you know, a GDP that's equivalent to a country anyway. And yeah. so you've got people that add pressure to that. And it'd be... It, Ultimately, you want it to be the politicians who make the right decisions, but maybe it doesn't have to be in this case. I mean, one of the things that was interesting, um, I've talked about it before, is um, that Silicon Valley has always been uh, seen by the world as a most innovative reactionary organization that creates a software that people need when they're in trouble and what you know they can see what's coming up next. I've not heard anything from Silicon Valley to do with the pandemic. At some point, you would think that it'd have some tracking app or something that people could use that somebody would have come forward with nothing at all so well, you, you know, you know there, there's, think... there's two points on that in mexico actually because of the incompetence of the uh local government the private initiative has actually been 
been very busy and they have doing advertising and they have been doing really a lot of stuff to actually make people aware of uh, the conditions in where, in where we're living in. I, to a certain degree, will disagree on saying that, uh, you know, a company like Facebook or a company like Google or a company like Microsoft should be starting actually taking care of this thing. Because, of course, immediately the, the, the way of thinking of people is, well, why are these guys doing doing this? I mean, this is, of course, we're going to be chipped. I mean, in, if you're going to the conspiracy theories kind of thing, what they are doing right now is they are saying, well, you know, Bill Gates was the one that orig originated this because, of course, he wants to make sure that we're all chipped. And, uh, you know, sadly, it needs to be, I mean, to a certain extent, it needs to be uh, the, the, uh, the, the government that uh, basically says, well, you know, this is what you need to do. Or what these other uh, companies can do is basically start, you know, giving money and saying, well, you know, what we have to do is uh, we have to make sure that we're staying in and whatever. And this is what uh, Hollywood has been doing. This is what comedians, musicians, everybody's, has, everybody's doing, their, uh, doing their part. But at the end of the day, what happens is that uh, the, the people that uh, take the, 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 the last decisions and the people, the, the people that most people will listen to are the government entities. However, I would really like to continue talking about this because, of course, we're going to get all wind up and we're going to start talking politics. And we have okay, well, that we were not going to do it. <laughs> let's let's leave this to go to bed with one last comment. And I think that politics drove the response more than the actual pandemic. I agree. We're getting some really nice uh, right. um, people saying hello for uh, to us. We are getting our good friend Raymond Aaron that we see him here with Richard. Raymond. Hey Raymond, how are you? It's uh, good to see you in our Disruptors Clinics. Congratulations on your uh, amazing event. You did a great, great job. Uh, we have uh, Tracy Zimmerman, which is also one of our uh, super loyal uh, followers. We really enjoyed. Thank you very much, Tracy. We have uh, our uh, my good friend Kiko Riojas, which is uh, he has the Keys Lounge in um, in Mexico, and it's the only dedicated bar and uh, Keys Museum. Uh, Keys, the, the the rock group in uh, in the in the world, super very interesting. So Kiko, say hi hi, how are you? And uh, we're also getting Gotham from uh, Mumbai uh, saying hello. And uh, well, if you are there, make sure to to drop us a note so that we can actually mention you. So let's uh, go to the next question. Um, this is from Al Alice from New Zealand, which, by the way, going back to female leaders, my favorite female leader is the New Zealand Prime Minister, Lucinda, whatever her last name is. She's, she's a fantastic lady. I mean, it will be awesome. Clearly <laughs> your favorite, Lucinda, around. whatever her name is. Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern. Yeah, she's fantastic. I mean, I love her. Anyways, it says Alice from New Zealand. What should I do to make a transition in my profession and create a decent office and work from home? So, Mr. Well, Craig. We don't really know what she does before, though, do we? Yeah, well, well, she going to throw it at me straight well. away. It's just basically okay, what uh, should transition. I do to make a transition in my profession and create a decent office and work from home? Well, I think let's let's take the second part of that question first. So to create a decent office and start working from home, what you have to do, in my opinion, is look at the space that you have where you sit and do your laptop and no longer is it a case of making it comfy. It's got to be comfy as well because you're going to spend a long time there. But it also has to be visually representative of the offer that you're going to make to people in terms of business. So I would say that's worth when you're allowed to get out of the house a trip to Ikea, or even to get onto a graphic designer. This will become a specific area of graphic design, designing your virtual office. So people can see that just that area here and that area here, I look like I'm voguing, where from the visuals that people have, we've got to be able to see that it's fine. The rest of it can have carnage all around that people wouldn't see. So I think that you should really consider doing that from home. Make sure you've got strong internet. 
um, and also become very familiar with video editing and various elements of stagecraft and presenting and talking and uh, the apps um, that are going to be effective. I think Ernesto's going to share a ton of them with us next week. As for the first part of the question, uh, make a transition in my profession, you don't have to jack in your job. You can still stay with your job and make it a side hustle. I've always talked about having 1.5 jobs. And what I would do is consider having um, something that's related to what you do right now. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and go for a completely different job unless you actually have an interest in doing it. But supposing you had a side business that did the same kind of work, but elsewhere. So it's not conflicting with your company, but you're doing it worldwide or you're specializing in a partnership or maybe you're running an agency or something. I think the sky's the limit. What, what we've learned from this current situation is no job is safe. So why would you hand over the security of you and your family to anybody, even if it's a good boss? The relationship is while you work together, happy days. But if you if push comes to shove, a boss is going to look after his own business faster than he's going to look after all his employees. Even if he or she really wants to, that's just the way it works. To keep a roof over everyone's head, you've got to make sure the roof survives. So I would make sure that you create your own side hustle, and then you've got leverage as we're going to talk about next week, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, depending on your efforts and your finances. Yeah, I think it's um, uh, what what I think most people have to understand is that uh, this has been a complete reset. I mean, the reset button has been now set. And uh, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to get yourself reinvented. And uh, right now, what we have to figure out is, What's going to be happening? Yesterday, I was having a conversation with somebody, and then they were saying, well, you know, uh, most of these companies are actually uh, thinking, I mean, these event promoters from these companies are, are thinking that they're going to still have their events in August and the events in, in, um, uh, in September. And I, I said, well, that's very, very uh, optimistic, but I just honestly don't think that that's going to be the case. I think we're going to be uh, pretty much here uh, for a while. And uh, that is just uh, an important thing that you need to do. So when you're thinking about reinventing yourself, when you're thinking about that, we're going to be uh, thinking of how your business is going to be working. Just simply, the first thing that you need to do is, what can I do which is which are people requiring? So look for uh, something that people are, re are requiring. Instead of, I mean, if you wear... If you were working in oil, possibly right now, oil is not something that is required by everybody. So try to think of something that people are requiring right now. What is what uh, it's a need for somebody? And as I was saying about my daughter, uh, Nina, she immediately is coming up with ideas of what people are needing. So check online, check uh, uh, what people are commenting on social media, e every single thing and try to come up with uh, different virtual and alternative digital solutions. And absolutely, I mean, as Dave was saying, I strongly believe that one of the most important skills to learn right now, and this is something that I absolutely encourage everybody, is to learn how to edit video. Because editing video is not about the technicalities of editing video, but more than anything, telling stories. And uh, the better you are at telling your story and telling why people should work with you, the better that you're going to be. So if you're thinking about a transition, that's, I think, what's going to help you the most, at least from news. Can I just... Uh, so, yes, yeah, thanks, Alice. There's one observation that came in about events. And do you remember they used to do MTV Unplugged, where you have an exclusive audience um, with uh, a rock star or a rock group who would just play the hits, yeah. but you're all sitting around drinking beer and chilling out. I think that you may find that a lot of the conferences and the big events that are coming up will have a limited door policy, but may still go ahead. So there'll be more spacing, there'll be less crowd, but a higher ticket to get in. I think that might be the route that a lot of people go to because they can't get the, 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 the huge numbers in. So therefore, they're going to have the ones that really pay to play to arrive in. In the same way as in certain countries, as, um, when you come to being a nanny in a kindergarten, there's a certain amount of kids that you can have, like 1.5 kids per nanny or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think you'll end up with that kind of thing per square inch or per square uh, meter for events. So I think we'll see events coming back in a different format. Yeah, they're going to be absolutely. But, but it's not going to be that uh, they're going to start at the beginning of May. 
<laughs> I mean, that is absolutely guaranteed it's not. <laughs> And if they do, don't go to them. It's exactly. too early. Exactly. Don't go to them. And I also, I mean, imagine Disneyland and uh, all of these parks. And uh, is, I mean, we 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 cannot really imagine right now what's what's going to be happening. But it's definitely going to be very very different. We're, we're getting here a comment from Gotham saying that uh, Prime Minister Modi in India shared an inspirational video today on uh, how creativity, innovation, and technology. Uh, should be actually embraced because, of course, we are definitely going virtual. Now, talking about a virtual, one of the things that I see more and more, and it's going to be like uh, mushrooms coming out left, right, and center, is going to be that story of the summits or these massive uh, speaker uh, events where everybody goes there. And, of course, I mean, they're trying to do good and they're trying to be nice and they're trying to help. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's going to burn so fast. It's just uh, really, uh, really, really bad. So my my point on, on those stories with events, I believe very strongly that themed events where really there's going to be more than anything of, well, you know, we're going to have 500 people trying to help you. Well, you, you know, it's going to be more into the themed kind of thing. So... There's going to be several summits which might happen, which are going to be on design, some of them which are going to be on marketing, some of them which are going to be, I think, themed so that people will be able to uh, participate and know exactly what they're going to be doing. And they shouldn't be 24 hours long. They should be, let's say, 60, 60, 60 minutes to an hour because, of course, that's like if it will be a TV show. I think what we're going to be experiencing, and we know it already by heart, is that this television format, the same as the comedians, the same as everything, this is what uh, people are, are uh, consuming. And I think that's what's going to continue happening. I think you're right. I think one of the things that we can look at is um, rather than just throwing it out there and hoping that people stick, it will be more tribe related, more industry related, more niche related. See, I'm happy to watch a load of speakers who are telling me how I can improve my business specifically. I don't want to watch a load of speakers who are going to talk about whatever it is because I've got better things to do than watch the rubbish ones before I get to the good ones. So I think you can have smaller, more intimate, intimate events, but plenty of them, which is great. Yeah, that's okay, great. Another question. You realize yeah. now it's five it, minutes left of the show. It, correct. So it's your it's your chance to pick your your uh, your uh, question. I'll go for the next one. We've got Saeed from Istanbul, and he's asking if everybody starts working from home as part of a gig economy, they should choose to live where they want to, so their clients will be worldwide and available. Which countries would be the best for this, and where would you two choose to work and and to live and work from? which is great. That's a very interesting question. So it's saying basically you can live in any country because you're online to your clients. So you don't have to live in your home country and you don't have to live in the current one. Which one would you choose to work from? So Ernesto, you're the expert on travel. You're the 247th most traveled person in the world. So you should get the answer perfect for this. No pressure. Go ahead. <laughs> I knew that you were going to say that. And as you can see, I have a map here on my on, my, on the back so I can actually pinpoint to, to where I would like to live. Well, I must. I, I have to say that, uh, I mean, I am having a great time here in, uh, in Texas. I, I love uh, where I live, and I think it's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, my favorite city in the world is Dubai. I have absolutely and single-handedly my favorite place to be in the world. I mean, I will be... Uh, very happy living there, but I, then I, then again, I will also be very far away from my mom, and uh, that will also make it a little bit difficult. So you know, I mean, I have never had any restrictions, geographical restrictions. I have lived in five different countries, and uh, right now, yes, you have the option to live uh, everywhere you want. However, I mean, still immigration laws are going to be applying. And uh, you have to be very careful for that. Now, I believe that there's going to be some sort of migration, which is going to be an interesting thing. There's going to be some, some sort of migration towards more um, isolated areas in the, uh, in the world. I mean, it could be in the same country where you are. But, I mean, right now what we're trying to do in a certain way is running away from people. And uh, I have the feeling that some people are going to be very happy immigrating to places where uh, they could be, uh, you know, that they can walk around their house 
<laughs> I mean, there's very few people that can actually walk around their house. So it is a, um, uh, an important thing to, to do. I mean, that, that was one of the things that I wanted. I wanted to have a house that I can actually walk around. Sounds a, a, a silly thing, but that's one of the things that I wanted since I was little. So it depends per person. I would be very happy just uh, working anywhere. I mean, I do not... Uh, uh, as long as, as long as, uh, as uh, well, uh, right now you cannot say, but my conditions, whenever I was choosing a place where to live is, I want to live in a nice place within a 25 to 30 mile radius, radius to a good hub airport. And I have lived in some of the cities that have the best airports in the world. I mean, in, uh, in Dubai, in Amsterdam and in Houston, which I think are the best airports in the world. But that, of course, doesn't count anymore. So... There you go. Well, wow, great answer. I, I I would probably mirror most of that. I would like to be closer to the UK, I think, um, because my, my family are, are there. My mum and dad should be watching today. Hello, mum. Hello, dad. Um, I love Dubai. After 30 or almost 30 years of being here, uh, I can't see what it does putting a foot wrong on anything. It's a beautiful place. Business is always here. Um, they spend a fortune on making it really welcoming for tourists and for expats. And uh, they're very smart. I mean, the thing we got a lockdown before everybody. Dave got frozen like this. <laughs> so Dave, if you can, please restart uh, your computer. And uh, while uh, not your computer, your, 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 um, uh, internet connection. So, in uh, while we are there, I'll go to another question from Fiona from Manchester, England, and she wants to know. Um, I love the show, but don't you guys get bored of making these shows? They must take forever to research. Well, that's a that's a great question. Uh, question. First of all, thank you very much for saying that you love the show. Uh, in fact, we both love very much doing what we are doing. I think it's just an incredible experience. We are both speakers, and we believe very strongly that uh, speaking is uh, uh, one of those industries which is going to change radically. Frank Mulcahy here is uh, telling us, I think speakers and coaches should develop offline and online businesses models. And I fully agree. I mean, right now, the uh, speaking industry has changed uh, dramatically. And uh, we are going to go different uh, in different ways. And what we are doing right now, it is one of the best ways to actually get your name across, get your uh, information across. We have uh, changed from uh, speakers to broadcasters. And uh, the fact that we are in the news segment, yesterday I was having a conversation with somebody that was uh, uh, asking me about uh, broadcasting and uh where uh you know ott television which is over the top television like hulu and netflix and uh, right now where everything is and uh, we are categorized as news and that's one of the great things that you should definitely be considering i mean basically doing something like uh, uh bringing the news to people in your industry gets you uh, out there and gets you gets to help you quite a lot so if we get bored the answer is absolutely not. We do not get bored because every single time we have to be aware of what's going on. We're having conversations as we were having conversation with uh, Amit right now. Just Amit is joining us all the way from uh, India. Uh, we're having uh, Frank, which was uh, talking to us earlier. We're having Pete. We're having Kiko. Uh, we're having Tracy. We're having Raymond. Everybody, we're having a conversation. This is a conversation. Plus, of course, everybody is sending us this, uh, is, is sending us these amazing questions which we are uh, also responding. So the answer is no, we love it. We absolutely love, it, love doing the show. And as speakers, I believe that very, I believe very much that we are going to be switching into becoming uh, broadcasters. And uh, we have another question from Harry from Toronto. He says, uh, should I write a book about my industry to position myself as an expert? I am a construction site manager and due to the drop in real estate projects, I had to lay off a ton of staff already. It's been crazy adventure. Will people buy this? Ah, well, here's my take on it. I mean, I hope that uh, in the meanwhile, Dave uh, I mean, can, can uh, join us again into these broadcasts. I am not uh, very much a believer in writing books anymore. Let me tell you why, and this is, uh, and uh, please don't take me wrong. 
Uh, right now, books have become nothing more but presentation cards. So basically, uh, you know, it's your business card if you want to put it like uh, if you want to put it like that. Right now, everybody and their mother have written a book. Everybody and their mother is an Amazon bestseller because if you actually sell three books in Amazon, you suddenly become a bestseller. And uh, most people which are actually saying that they are Amazon bestsellers are really being frowned upon and looked at if they are completely stupid. So, I mean, that might have worked five, six, seven years ago. Right now, I don't think that it has absolutely any leverage. Sure. I mean, if you have some amazing content to share and then you get published by Whiteley or you get published by, by Penguin or you get published by some sort of real publishing company, of course, there's going to be some, uh, some value uh, on it. Now, is that going to be the best use of your time? The answer is most probably not. I believe very strongly that if you would like to inform people about your industry, you learn to think like a Gen Z or as a millennial. You have to learn how to do video. You have to learn how to edit video. You have to learn how to tell your story in such a way that people can consume it. Right now, people are not really consuming books as they used to. And why? Because there's so much crap out there. So unless you have a great strategy, unless you have great content that you're going to be doing that, and the problem is it's going to take you a, a lot of time. Video is a lot faster. Video is a lot more powerful uh, por, uh, because I, I believe very strongly that if you uh, if you learn how to uh, tell your story using video, you will be able to uh, get a lot more of attention. And right now, what we need is instant uh, instant attention, so that you will be able to uh, you will be able to to start uh, commenting. And I uh, hear that Dave is here. Yes, there he is. Dave, you have <laughs> Dave, you have this weird tendency of disappearing and doing these disappearing acts. What happened? I'm a superhero, so every now and again I get the call to go off and save the world, and so, so I just have to go. Right and we get a cardboard cutout to leave here. So you say again? So we were talking about. Uh, we had a question here from uh, what's his name uh, about the books. Oh. Yeah, we have a question Harry from here. Toronto, was it? Uh, I lost his name. Yeah, he, he was uh, Harry from Toronto, basically asking yeah. about, should yeah. I write a book? So I have already told him what I thought. Okay. I'm sure that it's going to be very controversial. Yeah. I'm going to be banned by a number of different experts that, that think otherwise. But I was just being as, as honest as I possibly could be. Oh, I, I don't think it's as strict as you do. I think that a book is a great way to market your coaching course or put a stamp on the business that you're working in i mean typically you've got to look at the say a stand-up comedian a stand-up comedian will do a, a tour of say the states of comedy clubs around the states and they'll develop new, new material and then at the end of the season they'll do a netflix special so the netflix special comes out and everyone goes wow that's fantastic and then they have to do a new tour and develop new content and somebody like joe rogan for instance will do this uh, every year or every other year so that's a load of new jokes new content you've got to be able to develop i think that with books you're going to be able to do the same kind of thing i think you should have the books that relate and become part of a series but ideally i mean if you look at the the, the big names likes of jack canfields and, and dr john gray jack canfield do chicken uh, soup for the soul dr john gray um men are from mars women are from venus um these guys, Malcolm Gladwell, for instance, one of my favorites, and Seth Godin, these guys tend to have a single idea, and then they, they develop and spin off into lots of different things. So Chicken Soup has been in, in meant, say, 20-odd books from Jack Canfield, and Men and Women uh, has been a number of books from, from Dr. John Gray. I think that if you are a published proper author, then it makes a big difference. But Absolutely. I think that what you should have is a book should spin off to your coaching course. I think that's how you best develop it. Well, Harry, possibly you didn't hear that, but Harry is a construction, he actually, he's a, a construction site manager. So, I mean, I don't want to mean it disrespectfully for Harry, but I mean, unless you are, I mean, right now we're having Raymond Aron, which is uh, watching the show live. Raymond, you're an incredible author. You're a, a New York Times bestseller. I mean, if you have that uh, capacity of, 
of uh, coming up with incredible content that should be written and it's worth written so for people to, to write absolutely by all means but the problem is most people go into the into the fantasy that the book is going to make them a million dollars and that they're going to become absolutely incredible writers they write a book it takes 45 to 90 days there's even a lot of people that show you how to do the book and put it together and whatever and then they have a book which is for them more than anything a uh it's it's a um, me 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 kind of thing which in a way might not be able to help them right now people want to get results instantly i believe that the most important thing is learn from the generation c learn from the millennials and learn how to tell your story through video it's a lot faster it's a lot cheaper and uh, it might bring you results a lot faster than a book i mean that's just my honest opinion <laughs> i think i think one thing to illustrate that is the change that's happened in the last four to five years of movies versus tv once upon a time if you're a big star you were a hollywood movie star and if you're on tv you couldn't quite make it to the movies but if you did well done you've managed to make that big jump now tv is such good quality that many of the hollywood guys many of the guys on the big movies would prefer to be on tv because the quality of the, the, the quality of the tv is so good like game of thrones and many shows like that are just like movies and they spend a fortune making them and so the difference is when you're actually working as um a producer or a, if you're a script writer and you write a, um, a a movie script it will go for a number of different developers before it goes on the onto the big screen and you may get some kind of credit on the back of it but you probably won't get the whole thing if you're writing a script for a pilot um you will very likely get a job as executive producer because your job of writing characters will continue over and over the series so a lot of people made that that, that change so i think with the book world um i think that the natural progression isn't going towards being a journalist because i think there's no money in journalism anymore i think it's probably going towards being a podcaster and so your idea is enough to start those conversations and people want fresh content and relevant content so your book would be the icing on the cake but your podcast would be the one that brings the people to your brand and they'll buy from you when they like you. That's what I would say. But I'm sure Raymond Aaron would have more to say because, I mean, the guy does it for a living. So it, it hopefully we'll so, get the answer. It Raymond. Be so cool. Raymond, if you're watching, we would love to invite you uh, to get you interviewed here on the uh, uh, Toilet Paper Diaries. You have been very kind for being one of our... Uh, of our correspondence, but I think uh, that uh, minute and a half that you were sharing with us doesn't really make justice to the great uh, knowledge that you have. So we would love to, we'll do it publicly. We're actually inviting you uh, very soon. We'll get in touch with you because we would love to have you here on the show for a full show so that you can talk about this uh, controversial uh, point because I think that's where people are, are thinking. And my way of thinking, once again, is just my way of thinking. I don't want to say that it's the right the right thing but it's of course something for you to think about once again do your own research and uh, every single person has to have the uh, make their own decisions let's go to the last question because if not we're going to be <laughs> once again hanging out here uh, question but we have still a ton of questions and this is the reason why we will continue doing every weekend our disruptors clinic let us know if you like the disruptors clinic make sure that you go to bit.ly to get um, uh, forward slash toilet uh, paper podcasts subscribe to the podcast we have now 600 uh, sorry 529 subscribers little by little we're getting more subscribers into the uh, podcast which also makes us very uh, very excited and uh here let me just uh you want you choose you select the question or i select it your choice um i'll choose it let's have a look okay um Okay, Peter from Belgium asks, oh, this is perfect. What do I need to do to start my own podcast? And oh. how can I make money from it? Okay, making money from podcasts, and how do I start one? Well, you start off by getting your book idea and throwing it in the bin. Um, <laughs> and then talking about it to as many people as possible, recording it and getting it out on the internet. Ta-da! That's it. Finish. Okay, bye-bye. Nice. See you. <laughs> Well, that's going to be some. That's what. That's going to be some. Uh, well, some, podcasting. I mean, not going to be too long of, uh, of a question, but uh, why don't you start and then I, uh, I, I continue? 
Okay, podcasting has grown in leaps and bounds. And my background was in radio. And so I learned for many years about broadcasting as a, as a BBC journalist and as a radio DJ and as a presenter and reporter. I did all those different things. And it was a very flawed business model because it was so dependent on advertising. The more advertising you have, the more money the station makes. The more advertising you have, the least that anybody wants to listen to it because advertising kills a lot of your, your, your favorite broadcasting. So podcasts kind of fill the gap. Whereas they started off becoming, I think the, the biggest podcast originally was um, Ricky Gervais, who started doing it and he gave him away for, he sold him for about one pound, I think it was, to get access to his podcast. And he made a lot of money out of it because it was really funny and really smart. And he had his team who have now gone on to make uh, movies and, all, and TV shows independently. And it worked really well. It was very funny, very quirky. And it's, it's basically spurred a, a, a million podcasts now it's a billion dollar industry i think podcasting can make you money with advertising certainly for joe rogan with his many sponsors and he's the most downloaded uh, podcast um in the world i think 11 million do downloads he has per month and he has some of the best guests on it to follow kevin smith um the film director who used to do smodcast with his friends um and that was fascinating making money is not so easy but then again neither is with a book so I would always urge you, if you have an interest pod in podcasting, do it. Do it consistently. Do it to the best of your abilities. And there's a number of places where you can place your podcast. But Ernesto knows better than me. Our podcast is on almost everywhere. And so do it for fun. Do it as passion. But do it also to give your opportunity to get your bits and ideas out to people. And you'll find an audience. People will love it as long as you give them good content. Yeah. Great. Yes. Uh, so did great. I go missing then? Okay, well, first of all, let me just uh, share something about podcasts. I mean, uh, Dave and I thought of actually having a podcast, what was it, about three, four years ago? It was going to be called the Dave and Ernie Show, and uh, we were just going to be talking about what, whatever we talk about whenever, <laughs> whenever nobody's listening. And, uh, I mean, we know that we sometimes have very interesting uh, conversations, and I think that now Dave is, is uh, frozen again with a really interesting uh, post here. <laughs> so anyway, what I what I um, uh, what I think it's uh, super uh, important whenever you're actually thinking on podcasting is well, you know, I mean, what instead of actually you having a show because there's a ton of shows and it's actually very difficult to to get your feet inside of that uh, marketplace. What I suggest is that you actually become a regular guest in a number of co podcasts. So just go into Google and uh, and uh, type uh, how can I become a guest in uh, in a podcast and then you're gonna get you're gonna have a lot of articles which actually are talking about. There's a service that is called MatchUp that will uh, actually match you up with uh, other um, different people that will be able to have you on their podcast. So it is uh, uh, it is uh, ready. So we hear Dave once again. It's uh, he went to save somebody. In the wide universe so i think he will be appearing somewhere here so as soon as he appears i'll bring him back but anyway that's uh, that's oh there is uh so so who did you save this time dave um it was a cat stuck up a tree but it was a very very precious cat and it was a very big tree so oh, i feel better now I'm very i'll happy sleep well my my internet just disappeared today. I boosted my internet and doubled it so I could get, I would never have this problem again. And it just goes bang, gone, goodbye. I'm mean, going to have to start it up again. And nobody cares. And he probably enjoyed not having it there. But I'm back again for the last <laughs> part of the show. And lo and behold, Ernesto, look, our timing's much better today. Well, we, yeah, I just need to finish my the answer to my question. So I was just basically saying that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's much better to actually start trying to get yourself in different shows. And uh, if you want to start your podcast, you need to get yourself a good microphone. I mean, Mike, uh, Dave has also a good microphone so that you can actually record your uh, your uh, podcast. You need to have an intro like uh, intro and outro like we are having. You need to get yourself. Uh, the, the system that I use is called podcast.co. And uh, what is great, it's a, it's a service that uh, you... You basically uh, subscribe yourself to one system, 
and then they distribute all the podcasts to all the systems. So you can be in a, um, a Stitcher, you can be in Spotify, you could be in Apple, you can be in Google, because of course the important thing about your uh, your podcast is that you need to have uh, distribution. So those are the those are the, the the important things. And once again, this is exactly like the book. However, with the difference is that you know podcasting is a lot easier than really writing a book. A book takes a long, long time, and uh, by the, and and also you need the distribution, and you're not really so much in control of the distribution of the book. But and there's not going to be events where you can actually sell the book. So I definitely think that uh, podcast is a, it's a great. A tool that you can use but once again i still believe that the most important skill that you need to master before you um want to change whatever is going to happening learn how to work with video learn how to go to udemy and uh, get yourself a course in how to uh, edit go and learn uh, editing go to learn i mean it's it's actually relatively easy uh, to do this and once again dave went to save another cat and it is already 47 minutes and i want to make sure that i stop so please make sure to watch us tomorrow uh we're going to be starting a very uh, very exciting series called leverage and uh it's we're going to be talking about all these amazing opportunities on how you can leverage out of this crazy situation and uh i am still looking for dave it says that Dave is already back but i don't see him anywhere so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to wish you a fantastic rest of the weekend. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running Got a friend.